Hey everybody, today we're out here checking out the DYU V1 from F-Wheel. It is a full suspension, yes full suspension, stem folding moped and looks we've got a little bit of a storm brewing back over there. So let's try to go over all the details before we get uh, dumped on. Alright, let's head over to it. So the DYU, it's got this cool moped style mini bike look to it. Uh, it does have the full suspension, which is cool to see on something that's this small. We have the rear suspension there in the back, and we've also got that front fork uh, up here with suspension on it. So that is that is pretty cool. Um, the stem on this one actually folds down to save space if you're putting it into a trunk or fit into a tight spot, something like that. We're going to get to that in, uh, in a little bit. Ships with a kickstand. Also comes with these cool little fenders here. And a front and rear light. And both of those are actually integrated into the frame, uh, which is pretty cool to see. Um, again, you know, with any sort of frame integration, there's pros and cons. It looks slick, yes, but if you have to go and do some sort of repairs, maybe it makes it harder to get to, maybe it makes it more costly. So just things to consider um, when you're looking at that frame integration. So F-Wheel was actually launched in 2012, and DYU is their top brand. So they produce scooters, e-bikes, uh, and some mopeds and they aim to create intelligent commuting vehicles. Uh, currently, they sell directly to consumers uh, online. So this one, the DYU-1, comes in one size. It's this 20-inch frame. It's got a 20.5-inch standover height and a 23-inch reach. Uh, they currently have three colors, red, black, and white. And this is the, uh, this is the white one right here. So this V-frame we have, it gives a lot of weight bearing potential. So it is a very cool geometrically oriented design. Um, you don't see a lot of these bikes. I've, you know, in riding around, a lot of people stop me and goes, what is that? You know, where'd you get it? Um, people are drawn to, you know, this design. So as far as the design goes, it looks very slick. Um, it is 6061 aluminum alloy. And we also have, as I mentioned before, we've got that controller integrated into the frame. So you'll see it comes out of the stem right over here, and it comes back into the frame. And that is something you don't see integrated on a lot of folding bikes. I mean, you see it on some, um, but it's just more difficult to engineer around that folding idea as far as trying to get everything to fit in there, have the right amount of give. Um, so that's cool to see, you know, the integration there into the, uh, into the stem. Um, this thing is also waterproof. So it is rated at IP54, which is pretty good. Um, so basically, water is not supposed to hurt this thing. There is some dust penetration at that, uh, at that level. So the saddle over here, it is not adjustable, and it's got a saddle height of 19 inches. Um, this is a fairly comfortable seat. Um, it is a little bit wider, and so it's got, you know, like a lot of cushion to it. Um, However, that being said, bigger is not always better, bigger is not always more comfortable because what really dictates the comfort of a ride is actually your sit bones and how you are oriented. So for me, this bigger seat um, you know, is fairly comfortable, but I find after long rides, I kind of get that, that weird feeling and just lets you know like, hey, this seat's probably not exactly what you need. So this might fit somebody else's butt perfectly, um, but for me, it was just, you know, a little bit wide. Um, very comfortable for like scooting around, going up and down the streets, you know, running to snag something at the uh, at the corner store. But if I had to be on this for a long period of time, that is something that I would probably look at changing or adapting if I can um, to make it a little bit more comfortable for me. And so we have these tires over here. These are 12 inches by two and a half inches. Uh, max PSI is up to 45. Uh, they're made of this nylon material. Uh, it's just some regular Schrader valves over here. And honestly, I was a little bit concerned about bumps and cracks and things like that with these tires being so small and the attack angle that was gonna give us. Um, but I find those 12 inch wheels in conjunction with that full suspension system, I was really able to go over like sidewalks, um, cracks, bumps, you know, holes in the road, and I didn't die. So that is, uh, that is cool to see there. And then we have the rear suspension over here. So it's very cool to see the dual suspension on, on a bike like this. Again, something this small, you don't normally see that. So 
I think that in conjunction again with those with those tires really adds to the uh, the comfort of the right here. And then we go over here to the front, and we have the front suspension. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like a, a mini motor style uh, style to it. So that's cool. That's fun. And again, it really did handle these cracks and bumps and holes a lot better than uh, than I expected it to originally. Uh, and then we move up here and we have these plastic grips. They're not locking or anything, um, but you know, twisting around, I was able to get, um, you know, a little bit of movement to it. But for what you're doing on this and where you're gonna be riding it, that might not be that big of a deal. If we were taking this off road, which we shouldn't, um, maybe that's something I'd look at upgrading, getting something that at least, you know, if not dual locking also has, you know, some sort of locking feature to make sure I kept, you know, good control of the bike. Um, especially with the geometry of this one, it's very tippy. Um, so, I mean, if I, if I lean to the left, like it kind of all goes to the left because all this weight is kind of centered really low. So anything you move really high on these, you know, you know extending uh, handlebars here, it, it causes you to move a lot more at the bottom as well. So, again, if I was taking this off-road, which you shouldn't, um, that's something I would look at doing because the bike, you know, does tip, and I want to make sure I have good control. Um, of that. And as we set out of the cockpit here, um, we'll see that we have a single hydraulic disc brake. Um, stops really well. I mean, I didn't even have to adjust these things out of the box and, you know, stops well. We'll, we'll show a, a braking test when we get into the, the ride test portion of the review, but I'm able to stop. I feel safe with that. Um, they have some models that have dual disc brakes on it. However, with the speeds that this thing is going to go and the places you're going to be riding it, I think that the uh, the single the single disc uh, does does what it needs to do. And on this side we have the twist throttle, uh, pretty responsive. I mean, it's got a lot of snapback to it. Um, as soon as I pull on the throttle, you know, motor kicks up. So I do feel like there's some really good responsiveness here. Um, and then over here we have the light switch. So fairly simple, you know, it's a light switch. Turns the light on, turns the light off. Um, and then we have this horn down here. The horn is not the loudest horn I've ever heard. However, um, it'll get you noticed. So if you're trying to let a car know you're coming or maybe somebody in your way, um, that horn is gonna be able to let them know, hey, you know, I'm coming up on you at 15 miles an hour. Um, <laughs> and then back over here, we have the on and off switch. Um, it just clicks on, clicks off to turn it off and on. So we'll go ahead and uh, click it on. And that lights up our display here. The display is pretty simple. Um, just shows us that battery that we have left. You know, that's probably all you really need on this thing. You're gonna be scooting around um, and you just wanna know when the scooting is gonna stop. So, real simple, real, you know, streamlined design here. Um, on and off, fairly simple. So, this isn't a bike, so there's no drivetrain, there's no cranks, there's no derailleur, there's none of that you know, mechanical stuff that you normally worry about um, with a bike. It's gonna go straight from the twist throttle down to this uh, motor down here. So the motor is 350 watts, um, it's brushless. Again, we've got that integrated controller, so it's just running all the way down straight to the motor. Uh, produces about 50 newton meters of torque. Um, you know, that's sort of on the low end of of torque that we see from a motor. However, again, where you're going to be riding this thing, um, on the inclines you're going to be riding this thing, that is that is enough to get you around um, and, and keep you moving. It is fairly quiet. Um, you know, we'll go over that in the ride test, but honestly, it just zips around and I definitely hear the wind more than I hear uh, the motor for sure. Um, and then up here we have the foot rests. Now, this is probably my biggest con for for the uh, for the the right here I feel like they could have been a little bit more robust they are a little bit flimsy um, now I am a little bit bigger you know right about 210 215 pounds um, but still even if I have my feet all the way you know as close as I can to the uh, the center of the frame here um, I'm still getting a little bit of bend and a little bit of flex so if it were me, I might look at you know upgrading that, finding something a little bit more, a little bit more suitable for for a heavier person. Um, I've seen some some bikes that they have uh, what looks like 
BMX pegs. I think that would be probably the route I would go with this one. Um, yeah, so that's that's probably the biggest con about it is these uh, the footrest right here. All right, so that covers most of the components here. Um, I'm gonna go grab the charger and let's talk about the battery and the charger. So the battery we have here is 36 volt lithium ion um, and it is integrated into this top tube here. Again, with any sort of frame integration, it looks cool, looks sleek. However, you know the, the dark side of that is if there are any sort of repairs, um, it could be more costly uh, in the long run right there. Uh, the battery is 10 amp hours. I got 360 watt hours, um, and it takes anywhere between four to six hours for a full charge. Um, that being said, when I did my test, I took it down to zero, brought it back to a full charge, and uh, took me a little bit over five hours, uh, like five hours and 10, 5.15, something like that. So, you know, four to six, five hours seem to be the, uh, the ticket for me. Um, and once you do get it fully charged, you get anywhere between 20 to 25 miles per charge. Um, you know, for running down to the gas station, hanging out at the boardwalk, you know, scooting down to the beach, um, that's going to be, you know, probably some good scooting miles right there. And then over here on the charger, uh, the charger weighs a little bit over half a pound, uh, measured it at 0.66 pounds. Uh, it's 1.5 amps, you know, very standard charger, very standard connection, and it connects over to the bike um, right back over here, uh, just south of where you would mount a license plate or something like that and it's just got this nice little rubber cap on it. You pop that out and uh, plug it in. I haven't had any issues with um, this cap coming off or connection issues with the charger. Everything seemed to function um, as intended. All right, so that covers, uh, that covers the components of the bike. We went over you know, the frame, we went over uh, the motor, we went over the battery, and now I think it's time to put all those things to the test. All right guys, before we get into the ride test portion, I just wanted you to see what it looks like with that stem folded down. So let's take a look at that. So you see we do get some of that elevation collapse here. Um, it doesn't fold in the middle or anything, so we're not gonna relieve any of that length there. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's, uh, let's head out for the ride test. All right, so we're on the bike, getting ready to put this thing through its paces. We'll go ahead and turn it on. Just click the button over here. All right, and then we are good to go. There is a little bit of speed ramping that goes on here. It doesn't really just give you the full, um, the full gambit of the motor as soon as you start twisting throttle, which is probably pretty nice, um, probably safer. But as soon as you kind of hit on it, we get going, we get up to speed. Again, any, any of those little like cracks and bumps in the, uh, the cement here, nah, I'm not even feeling them. Between the, uh, the full suspension and, and this big old thick seat, I feel like there's a lot of cushion that takes place before, uh, before I'm feeling any of, that, uh, any of that energy. And one of the features I like about this is it does have a um, cruise control on it. So we've been holding this down for a little bit and I believe, I believe it's five seconds. Um, I'd have to double check exactly what it is, but after about five seconds, if you're holding down, going the same speed, and then you let go, um, we just continue to go at the same pace. So that's nice. So once you kind of get up to speed, if you know you're gonna be cruising for a while, you can take that hand off. Um, you shouldn't take your hand off, right? You should always have that hand over there um, for safety, but if you had to, you could. And it's nice, because I'm not you know, using my wrist or anything like that. I am just, uh, just hanging out, holding on to it as if it were a uh, regular, regular grip there. So we're scooting around. As far as the balance goes, it's one of those things where you just gotta get on it and, and feel it out. It does have that very like moped kind of style to it. And so we've been up at this 15 miles an hour for pretty much Pretty much the last couple of minutes here and uh, it really hasn't slowed down on any of these little inclines or anything like that. Very cool to see. Gonna come to a stop here so we can cross over here. All right, so we're back here in the neighborhood cruising around top speed here. And we're just gonna go ahead and do a braking test. Make sure that uh, we can stop if we needed to. 
Yeah, that was about uh, about 10 feet, going 15 miles an hour. Not bad, let's do one more. Get up to that top speed. Yeah, probably closer to nine feet on that one. So, stops fairly quick. Again, not a lot of power, not a lot of speed. I feel like it does the uh, it does the trick there. All right, so let's uh, let's find out what's going on down there at the motor there. You know, again, fairly quiet. I'm hearing more wind noise and the sound of the tires over the pavement than the uh, than the motor itself. Right, guys i think that's going to do it for this one if you want to see the list of specifications or to read the full written review you can head on over to electricridereview.com all right ride safe